Chapter 2 Population Where in the world do people live and why? Demography is a study of population. Demographers report the population density of a country as a measure of total population relative to land size. Population density assumes an even distribution of population over the land. This is also known as arithmetic population density. No country has an evenly distributed population. Egypt, with a population of 73.3 million in 2004, has a seemingly moderate arithmetic population density of 190 per square mile. An estimated 98% of all Egyptians live in just 3% of the country's land, making the arithmetic population density useless. Physiologic population density is the number of people per unit area of agriculturally productive land. Population distribution. People are not distributed evenly across the world or within a country. One third of the world's population lives in China and India. In addition to studying population densities, geographers study population distributions. Geographers represent population distributions on dot maps. Here's an example of a dot map. As you can see, the world population is unevenly distributed across the land. There are four major areas where within people are concentrated within. They are East Asia, South Asia, Europe, and North America. East Asia has almost 25% of the world's population. Most of this population is concentrated in Korea, Japan, and China. There are over 1.3 billion people in China alone. South Asia. This second major population concentration also lies in Asia, and is similar in many ways to that of East Asia. There are two physical geography barriers that create the boundaries of this South Asian population cluster. They are the Himalayan mountains to the north, and to the west is the Indus River Valley in Pakistan. Europe. Europe is a dense population cluster which contains over 728 million inhabitants, which puts it in a class with the South Asia concentration and the similarities end there. The European population cluster includes numerous cities and towns, many of which developed as a result of the Industrial Revolution. The three major population concentrations we have discussed account over 4 billion of the total world population of approximately 7 billion people. North America The major focus of the North American cluster lies in the Megalopolis regions. These are the urban complexes along the eastern seaboard from Boston to Washington, D.C., including New York, Philadelphia, and Baltimore. These regions account for more than 20% of the U.S. population. Population density is not reliable. If a prosperous country such as the United States has problems conducting accurate census, imagine the difficulties that must be overcome in less well-off countries. If the population of a disadvantaged group is undercounted, it translates into a loss of dollars for the city. Why do populations rise or fall in particular places? In the 1960s, Paul Ehrlich warned others that the world's population was increasing too quickly and was outpacing our food production. Further back in 1798, British economist Thomas Malthus advised that the world's population was increasing faster than the food supplies needed to sustain it. The food was growing linearly while the population grew exponentially. Population change in one place can be affected rapidly by what is going on in a neighboring country or at the regional scale. In a population, natural increase is the deaths minus the births, while the total population is immigration plus the births. Emigration, along with deaths, subtract from the total population. Birth, death, immigration, and emigration can all be used to calculate demographic change within a territory. One way to easily grasp the growth rate in the world population is to compare population's rate of growth to its doubling time, which is the time it takes for a population to double in size. Therefore, a fast decrease in doubling time leads to a population explosion. Population growth at the regional and national scales. CBR, which is known as crude birth rate, is the number of births in a year per 1,000. CDR, also known as crude death rate, is the number of deaths in a year per 1,000. Total fertility rate also known as TFR, is the average number of children born to a woman of childbearing age. Countries and regions go through stages of expansion and decline at varying times. Many factors that affect population growth include professional opportunities for women, economic well-being, higher levels of education, later marriage, family planning, cultural traditions, and religion. The Demographic Transition Model On the y-axis, we have the number of people per thousand per year. On the x-axis, we have the time. 
increasing from the 18th century forward. As you can see, the graph is split into four sections, each representing a different stage with different properties. There are certain factors that limit and or enhance the population growth. Some of the ones that limit include famine, epidemics, plagues, and wars. Some of the ones that enhance include agricultural advances, industrial revolution, sanitation, and vaccinations. Stage 1. Low growth. High birth rate and high death rate lead to a population that varies over time, with little long-term population growth. Stage 2. High growth. High birth rate and declining death rate lead to a sustained and significant population increase. Stage 3. Moderate growth. Declining birth rate combined with already low death rate lead to a continuing population growth. And lastly, stage 4. Low growth or stationary stage. Low birth rate and low death rate lead to a very low rate of growth. Now, why does population composition matter? Maps cannot reveal two other aspects of those populations, the number of men and women, and their ages. Population composition is the structure of a population in terms of age, sex, and other properties, such as material status and education. Age and sex are key indicators of population composition, and demographers and geographers use population pyramids to represent these traits visually. In poorer countries, the pyramid looks like an evergreen tree, with a wide base and short branches at the top. Population pyramids for wealthier countries look like a slightly lopsided base, with a wide middle. Infant mortality rate, also known as IMR, describes the number of babies that die within the first year of their lives. Child mortality rate, also known as CMR, describes the death of children between the ages 1 and 5. Infant and child mortality rate reflects the overall health of a society. Another indicator of a society's well-being is life expectancy, a figure indicating how long, on average, a person may be expected to live. Women outlive men by about four years in Europe and East Asia, three years in Sub-Saharan Africa, six years in North America, and seven years in South America. Low life expectancies in some parts of the world are caused by the ravaged disease such as AIDS. AIDS is a deliberating disease that weakens the body and reduces its capacity to combat other infections. Over the past two decades, the AIDS pandemic has reached virtually all parts of the world, but its full dimensions are unknown. Sub-Saharan Africa is the place most hit by this disease. The maladies of longer life expectancy. Chronic diseases are generally long-lasting afflictions now more common because of higher life expectancies that afflict middle and old age populations. Examples include cancer, heart diseases, diabetes, obesity, stroke, etc. Okay, so how do governments affect population change? In population and government, there are three types of policies. Expansive, eugenic, and restrictive. In expansive, they encourage large families and raise the rate of natural increase. In eugenic, it is designed to favor one racial or cultural sector of the population over others. And in restrictive, one example of it is the one-child policy in China.